My people, what up, though? We back with another episode of All Black Men Need Therapy. My name is Chief. And I'm Bell. And it's Prentice's anniversary. Shout so out to them. Yeah, the brother's out with his lady celebrating their anniversary and whatnot. So he couldn't be here tonight, but we wanted to keep this train rolling. So here we go. Happy anniversary, P and Sarai. By the way, I was one who officiated their wedding. If y'all need a wedding officiant, holla at your boy. Speaking of, I just came back from Utah, y'all. From Utah, where I officiated a wedding. It was dope. It was super, super fancy. It was real nice on the, on, on the top of a mountain. It was just, it was all types of fire, man. Flowers galore, good people, good vibes. It was just a dope, real dope experience. So if any of you need a wedding officiant, holla at your boy, man. I incorporated a unique blend of poetry within my ceremonies. It's been really, really dope. I've done, I think this is 57 weddings in the past four years. So it's a lot going on. Um, so yeah, highlight your boy, man. Also, while I was out in Utah, I like to immerse myself in the culture and try to learn about what's going on out there. So I heard, I know it's a, it's a big Mormon population. So I did some Googling on how the Mormons live or whatever. And I learned about soaking, y'all. <laughs> soaking. <laughs> and, and if you don't know what it is, I'm about to pull it up on my phone and read y'all the definition. But why? I gotta, why would we do that? Because <laughs> the people need to know about this shit that goes on. Google, Google is your friend. They can look it up. Leave it at that. I'm Yo, not co-signing on you I, reading that. If y'all, if y'all, for those of you who are listening, Google soaking Utah or Mormon soaking, and then holler back at us because it is it is one of the most wild concepts I've ever heard of. Yo, it's crazy. But y'all Google that and get back with me. But um. That's part of my check-in. Uh, it's it's uh to to spend I spent four days in Utah. It was pretty dope, man. It was a different experience. Um, beautiful scenery. I don't know if I could live there, but if you were skier, whatever, it's a dope place. It's a dope place to be. It actually snowed out there when I was there. Like it was. Oh, word. Yeah, it did. It was wild, but it was uh it was a good time though. Real good time. Real good people. And uh, thankful to have you know to have had that opportunity. Outside of that. Uh, nominations are on Friday, yo. Grammy nominations are on Friday. You know I, what time they're going to drop? I think it's 1045 uh, Eastern time. Eastern? Yep. Um, uh, so, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I feel good, but, like, I think I'm cool. Like, obviously, I want to be nominated, but I think I'm cool either way. Like, last year, I was, I, I think... I felt good about it last year and didn't get it. And it, it, I, I dealt with those emotions. And I think now it's kind of like, eh, you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I got another plan in motion. So everything is everything is rolling. But um, we'll see what happens Friday, man. We'll be back at the Grammys next year. You know what I'm saying? Fresh new suits and all that. You dig? But uh, kids are happy and healthy. Everything's good. Bellhead, what's good with you? Check in. Um, I'm good, man. I um, Speaking of Grammys, I got my appointment tomorrow. To go uh cop a couple more suits, but um I'm about to pick one out for the Grammys. But uh I'm good, man. I um started rehab. I'm, I'm not sure if I shared, I think I did. I shared on a check-in that I have a slightly torn meniscus. So um this is my second week of rehab. Already seeing some improvement. But um the sad thing is I can't run. I mean I can run. But I'm, I, I want to give this rehab, you know, the courtesy of doing what it's supposed to do. So by me running, I won't really be able to tell um, how much is working because the challenge is when I run, my knee swells up. So I'm trying to keep the swelling down. So I'm not going to run for three months, man, which is that's going to be crazy. But it is what it is. Like, I need to to take care of that. Um uh what else Let's travel 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 busy busy month for me busy month uh anybody in houston hit me up i'll be out there uh shit next week i'll be out there next week um i got a bunch of travel going on what else i think that's it man i don't think i really got much to report Really? Yeah. Shout out to my man Chase. He uh passed his belt test on Friday. Oh word. 
Yeah. Or did, he, did he have to break a board? Nah, it was just um. Remember, he's four, so I don't know how many boards. Bubba had to break a board. I mean, he kind of you know pushed the board up and, and almost bent it, so it was easy to break. But she had to break a oh, board. Okay. How old was she? She was four. I was showing Chase the video when I was at the crib. The guy, okay. It's gonna be hard. And I'm like, no, look at it. And then he was like, oh, yeah, no, nah, I don't, no, nah, no, he didn't. He just had to, but it's not. It's like a white yellow belt. So yeah. it's like. I don't know how it works. I thought it was all solid belts, but no, it's anyway, like, yeah, he had to do like an order of operations. Yeah, he had to yeah. do the different blocks, the punches, yeah. and all of that stuff. So he was excited. I got it on tape, which is dope. Um, yeah, that's that's really it, man. That's really it. Um, I'm busy. That's really it. That's really it. Shout, shout out to my girl Janine, real quick. I had a call with her today, and uh. She was holding me accountable on some stuff, so I appreciate her. Uh, so I want to make sure I shout her out publicly. But yeah, man, I'm good. That's all I got. That's what's up. Well, all right. Well, let's go ahead and get right into it then. That was a quick check in. Six minutes. We normally have sixteen minutes, but we get into the episode. So well, we're three right. of us too. Yeah, we get we getting right to it. Um, so I saw this clip. Shout out to uh, the Pivot Podcast, RC, Fred, and Chan. But uh, I, I'm a fan of them, and I watch it often. And it was this one clip on there that I that I that spoke to me, and I think. As football players, Bell, it's good that you know we're happy to do this this particular uh, treatment right now because I think we can we it, it may resonate or we can at least relate to it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna play the clip and then um we can we can get some dialogue around it. But uh, where is that? Right, chun. Check it out, y'all. This is something that honestly people don't say, and I've never actually said it before, especially on wax. My therapist told me. And I talk, I have a therapist. I talk to a therapist now. And as achievers and as people that get graded and we grew up, our whole life was getting graded, four star, three star, five star. Every game, what you get? You get a grade. You get a percentage. You get like there's somebody grading you. So then you become accustomed to your emotions and your feelings are off of other people's approval of you. And I never thought of sports that way, but it is. It's a coach telling you you're doing a great job. It's you do you it's you making that play and then going in the film room and everybody be like, "Damn, hell of a tackle, bro." And that gets you up. And that's something that I never thought about till honestly last week when I talked to my therapist about it. He was like, "You need other people to grade you because that's why you live on a scale system." He was like, you need to find fulfillment for yourself. And this is stuff personally, not even about sports. It's just for me. It's like, yeah. you need to find fulfillment in yourself. You don't need other people to make you feel good and things of that nature. So I was talking to my therapist. That's another thing. Black folks don't believe in therapists. Get you a damn therapist. They help because even that conversation opened my eyes. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pin in it. I thought they hear the witness. So yeah, so shout out to the Pivot Podcast. But like that, that, that little clip spoke to me because obviously we we played football our whole lives. And we've been graded our whole lives. And that grade oftentimes determined how we move throughout the course of the week. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think it, it impacted me greatly in college because that ultimately we had, I was two guys at my position and we kind of rotated starting spots all the time because whoever graded higher during the week. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it's, it's more to it than that. But just in general, what were your thoughts as you, as you, as you listen to the clip? Um, it instantly made sense to me and it brought me back to this moment I had a couple years ago with my then boss and it, all, all it is is validation you know what I'm saying like because the moment I'm thinking about things are going well like I was doing well but I'm like I just need you to come confirm I'm doing well you know what I'm saying? Because I had nothing to weigh it against. So I needed him to get eyes on me to make sure I wasn't overestimating um, success or underestimating success even. So it does make sense. And, um, and I also think a lot of us do things so somebody could tell us something. Like, 
I'm gonna do this so I'm I'm a, I'm gonna buy this so people people can say I got a nice car. I'm, I'm gonna do this so people can do this or say that. <clears throat> so I don't think that has to do with just athletes. I personally believe it's probably most people. I would say the the minority, and obviously I have no numbers to back this. this is just my opinion. I would say the minority can move without vi- vi- validation. That's my opinion. So I looked up. I was I looked up different like phrases on like you know uh, validation or approval seeking or whatever. And some of the quotes, so some of the definitions I got were pretty interesting. And, and they labeled down. So it says, by definition, approval means believing something is good enough or acceptable. When someone seeks approval, they're asking for others to accept who they are or what they've done. Seeking approval from others often means you haven't provided this to yourself. Low self-esteem and neglectful experience with your first caregivers may take you, may make you constantly need and seek approval as an adult. So when I saw that, it it just made me think of like, at what point do we do we develop that I guess that that self belief or that self confidence where we're no longer seeking the approval from others because even in, in 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 like you said in daily life we have a tendency to kind of lean towards that validation or that approval to 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 help us move forward or to to keep our heads high. You dig what I'm saying? And then they they double down on it by saying low self-esteem and neglectful experiences with your first caregivers may make you constantly need to seek, need and seek approval as an adult. Now, <laughs> I, when I read that, I, I heard you in my head, yeah, it goes back to slavery, man. Like <laughs> everything dials back, but like we're getting down to the root of it all. And I don't think people are aware of how much that need of approval is 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 brought on to us by our caregivers for example like you always talk about how mamita stayed pouring into low and like low don't have you know don't have them issues and whatnot you know what i'm saying everybody don't got that yeah it's funny because i don't know why i do this but i always be going to like the opposite Cause like in my mind, like I heard everything you said, but in my mind, I also feel like our caregivers could set a low bar unintentionally, you know what I'm saying? Like unintentionally. So hypothetically, you grew up broke, you grew up on food stamps, you grew up poor, you grew up whatever, whatever the, the, the socioeconomic status if you're doing better than how you were raised, then you're successful. You know what I'm saying? But what if you're, what if you're made for more, but you're, you're weighing your success on you doing better than you did as a kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, are, are we limiting ourselves by these standards that have been set for us? Whether it be, a lack of approval, too much approval, whatever the case. Like, are we limiting ourselves? Because for all the praise that Mamita gave low growing up, her, just like all of us, we still have our own insecurities. You know what I'm saying? That there's still certain limits that we put on ourselves. Now, it could be because nobody's there telling us, hey, you're, you are doing a good job. Keep it up. It could be We think we're doing a good enough job, so we don't need to do more. It could be we don't believe we are worthy of more. It it, it could be a lot of different things. Um, So when you said that, that's where my mind went. I'm like, there's negative consequences from people not giving you the courage or the, the praise and the encouragement that you should have gotten when you're younger. And I also think that that can also be a detriment too. Like, I don't know. I don't. Know, I don't even know if what I'm saying is making sense. No, I, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm. I'm. So I'm, I'm trying to think back to like my upbringing and whatnot, and I can like, and how I'm raising my kids. Like, I'm. I'm imploring them to like, you know, shoot for the moon. Like, be the best you can be. If you can, my, like, like Bubba get an 89. If you can get an 89, you can get a 90. Get that A. You know what I'm saying? And I'm. I'm I'm setting the bar super high for her, and I think about my upbringing, and it's like, mom just wasn't trying to have me fail. 
but she wasn't necessarily pushing me to she she wasn't setting the bar up there, you know what I'm saying? So if I brought home my 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 C minus, it was all right, nigga. You ain't got an F, you all right. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? But that goes back to her standards. You know what I'm saying? Like and how her how she was raised. It's like what well, what's the alternative? You know what I mean? Like she's seen what could happen if you weren't in school at all at all. So it's like if he's getting a C, C minus, shit, he's in school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's a that's a win. It's all relative. You know what I mean? No, for sure. So do you find yourself in 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 because obviously you're raising your children differently than how you were raised. Do you are you imparting that or doing your best to impart that confidence and self-esteem within your kids so they 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 are I mean obviously they're gonna we all have our own insecurity that we talked about, but like to be as confident as they can. Are you imparting those things in them to where they can yeah. sustain without the validation or approval? I mean, again, I have nothing to back this up. I just feel like we all are going to need validation or approval at some point, right? Like I don't, I don't think anybody can get through life without some type of gratitude. You know what I mean? Like that's expressed towards them. I, I just personally believe that. I'm not saying it's true, but that's just how I feel. Um, what I just posted about this. I, I posted about um, something to the effect of like successful kids. And what I was saying is success is relative. You know what I'm saying? So for you, that Peach's example is a perfect example. You're pushing Mia to get, if she got 89, to get a 90. Peach's definition of success was just being full time in school. Potentially, mm-hmm. didn't matter what you got. You're there. Like mm-hmm. that's success for her. Whereas mm-hmm. your level of or your view of success, as far as academia goes, is, is completely different. Which makes sense. You're a good student, like so that makes sense. So what I was saying is, success is relative, and our definition can change, right? Depending on the season of life we're in, or whatever the case, and. What I don't want to do as a parent, to answer your question, what I don't want to do as a parent is to um, put my expectations on my kids. I want them to be good, confident humans. That's what I wrote. That's it. Like, whatever that means. Like, people always say, because Chase is so big, they always be like, you're going to be mad if he doesn't play football, huh? I'm like, no, I will rejoice if he doesn't play football. Like, I will be happy. Why? Because that means he found something that he's passionate about, right? Not something I'm passionate about, something he's passionate about. Now, if he plays football and he happens to be passionate about it, that's awesome. But I'm not, I'm not about the whole vicarious living, right? I want my kids to, if Chase grows up and he says, dad, I want to be a plumber. I love that, son. Let's like, tell me why. Like, tell me why you're so passionate about it. Let's go make it happen. You know, whereas there was a time I'm like, nah, man, you got to go to college. Like, even with Bree, I'm like, nah, you got to go to college. But now I'm like, yo, if Bree wants to be a nail technician, no knock or no shade to nail technician, but if she wants to be a nail technician and she came to me with a plan and how she's going to get a, go about doing it and why she's passionate about it, I'm great with it. I'm great with it. You know, like, I, I think that was my biggest aha moment. It's like not projecting my definition of success on my kids as long as they're confident and they're good people i'm cool you know what i'm saying like as, as long as they have a plan as long as they have a plan like if chase comes back with, with c's i'm like all right bro like what's the plan you know what i'm saying like you, c's get degrees i understand that but what's the plan like if this is how you're going to go then i need to see a plan that will that will validate that this is okay you know what i mean i thought that was a real long answer my bad no, 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 all good. I, I mean, get it. So one of the questions I had was, is it still important to you to be validated by people, family, friends, coworkers, yeah. whatever? Like, so is that something that still, because, you know, we, we we try to like get to a point where a, a lot of people have gotten to a point where they're like, I don't care what people think and so on and so forth. But that doesn't, that's doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't care or need that validation. So, I, I've, I've said this before. I don't care what the masses think. I, I don't. But I care what those who care about me think. Like, that's what I do care about. Okay. Where you and I were just talking today. And we, the comment I made to you was like, you know, 
your life would be so much smooth or life would be so much smoother if we didn't take things so personally. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like strangers. No, I couldn't care less what they have to say about me. Like I'm cool. But if Bree, Lo, my mom, my dad, my brother, like if they, if they got my sister, if they, if they feel away, then I'm going to care about that. I'm not saying that they'll be right, but I, I, I care enough to hear them out. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? So I, I, so I don't believe that. I don't care what people think. I, I don't. I don't believe that adage. That's just me. What about you? you? I, it's weird. So I, I'm thinking back at the conversation we had today, and I told you I didn't like the way I was treated. I don't think it was. I'm trying to think about it. I don't think it was a sense of like trying to look for validation in that point. I think it was just given the context of the situation, I felt like I deserved more. Uh, what what I think is you wanted, you wanted basically your just due. Like, I'm going to use this, it's kind of cliche, but almost like I'm him. Don't treat me like that. Like in this, in this arena, this is what I do. So don't treat fair. me like like a runner to mill person. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I think from what exactly. our conversation, that's that's what I felt. That could have been it. So can we tie that? Is that is that validating? Yeah, I mean it's minimizing, if nothing else. It's minimizing you to a commodity. That's probably the best way to put it. Like it's nothing special about you. You're just this. Right, right, right. Eh. I and that doesn't, that doesn't feel good. Not not no. not when you put your heart and soul in something. You know what I'm saying? And for somebody to be like, "Oh no, that's that's just toilet paper. I can get toilet paper anywhere." Yeah, and I think that was the context of it. Like it, it didn't it, it did it did feel minimized. Yeah. And I don't know if I, but I don't know stop, if valid- stop, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't know if validation was the word was or was is the word I'm looking for. But yeah, I definitely felt minimized. And well, you can say you didn't feel validated. Yeah, but I think appreciation is is kind of yeah. I mean, that's still approval. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You, you can use whatever synonym you want. It's still yeah. approval. So I, yeah. So outside of that that particular working situation, Bell, is there a time? Like, do you remember the last time you? I don't know. I can't say consciously, but you you felt the need. Excuse me for validation or approval. I think I think to to your point, the same situation. Um, I only get like that when I feel like I'm being taken for granted. Explain. Like, I'm. This is this is not a fair example, but I'm gonna use it. But um, Bree Bree was a teenager, and she she was going through some teenage stuff and. I remember having a conversation with her and not that she was coming at me, but she was like minimizing what I did. And, and I think part of that is my fault because I don't say a lot about what I do. Like I just do. And, and it was something that happened and I like barked on her. Cause I'm like, yo, Cause it has something to do with a car I just bought her or something like that. And it was like, that was like part of it. And I'm like, yo, I just spent $8,000 on this car. Like, I don't want to hear, like she was minimizing something that I did. I'm like, I just spent my own money on this car for you. And then she instantly was like, oh, I didn't know it cost that much. But it's like, yeah, no shit. I get cost this much. Like that's how much things cost. You know what I'm saying? But that was only because I felt like she wasn't appreciative and or minimizing what I had done for her already. Where it's like, I don't need, I don't do it to get the validation, but when it's not appreciated, then I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it known what I did. You know what I'm saying? Or another scenario is that one time you tell the friend, no, where it's like, you don't need validation every time or even appreciation in some cases, every time you do something for them. 
But if it's the one time that you don't and they start barking or whatever, getting pissed, that's when you start pointing out all the other stuff. At least for me, that's how it is. That makes sense. So, I mean, I, I didn't disclose my situation, but I'm listening to what you just said. And, and, and you brought up the word appreciation again. Like, mm-hmm. And you said, so you now start to express all the other things that you did or what you did to, to get that appreciation. To earn that appreciation. Right. That you're not receiving. Yeah. Right, right, right. I don't. So I'm thinking about it. Obviously, in this context, the, the relationships aren't the same. So it wouldn't have been worth me even mentioning it to try to earn that appreciation because I got it, just not from the individuals in particular. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? All right. So one of the other things that says, when was the are, are, do you do you intentionally? And if so, how often do you validate the people in your world? Probably not enough, bro. If I'm being honest, I know I don't do it enough because I remember when my mom had moved to she her her and my dad split during this time, and she had moved to Texas and South Carolina. But I can't remember when I said. It. I think I said it in Texas. I had to say it in Texas because. She moved to Texas and she got her own place. And that was the first time she had lived alone. I mean, shit, I think maybe ever in her life at that point. Um, she had my she had my do- my daughter. She had my sister when she was 19. And so yeah, I don't think she's ever had she's ever lived alone. So I, I had told her, I'm like, I'm proud of you. And that meant so much to her. Because again, I, I we, Again, I'm a child. I'm, I'm her her child, so I think there's things that happen that I just don't slow down and appreciate enough. But seeing her do that, that was something that was outside of her norm. So I felt it important to say it. Um, but yeah, there's there's people in my life that I, I definitely don't say that enough to um so when did you realize so in that moment when you said i'm proud of her i'm proud of you and you felt her being gracious for that that response did you not have the the wherewithal to be like wow this made her feel good maybe i should do more of this it was kind of like oh that was a momentary thing and then it the feeling passed again I, i think it goes back to routine like i said and again Same thing that happened with Bree in that same scenario where she just got so used to me doing these things that she didn't understand the implications of them or what it took to go into doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if your mom's putting food on the table every day, you're not thinking like, oh my God, I'm so grateful for this food. But you don't know what she had to do to get it. You know what I'm saying? Like how long she had to work, whatever the case but it becomes part of your routine. You know what I'm saying? And then th- okay. this is the, this is how it comes up where it's like, not that I would ever say this, but like if, if the scenario would be you putting food on the table every day and then she comes home like, well, look, man, you got to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches tonight. We ain't got nothing to eat. And then me barking like, damn, how we ain't got nothing to eat? Like, how, why, like, why you ain't got nothing, no food for us? And then it's like, she would then go into all that she had to do to put the food on the table mm-hmm. unbeknownst to us, because that's like our life pattern. Like that's just what, what we know life to be. So again, the reason why I complimented her is because there was such a vast difference from what I was used to. Like it was the opposite end of the spectrum. So I'm like, mm-hmm. wow, you did all that by yourself. Like that's dope. Yeah. So you know what I mean? That reminded me, I think I shared this story early, early, early on in the podcast, but it reminded me of a time when, when I was really young. And um I I, sh- I sh- now looking back at it, obviously didn't have the wherewithal to be like, I'm so appreciative of, of all that you do. And shout out to my moms because she was making it work, you know what I'm saying? Really sacrificing for her kids and whatnot. But I remember this specific moment and I, I called the moment I realized we was broke. <laughs> and uh, 
I didn't know any better. You know what I'm saying? I, that, should that, be a, that should be an episode, by the way. What? The moment I realized I was broke, we were broke. <laughs> we can do that. We can do that. Um, but I like I I vividly see her body on the bed right now. I see the little I see the little TV stand with the with the with the can with the with the soda can on it. I see the, the TV with the, the 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 V antenna coming out the back. Like I have a very vivid picture of this moment. Um, moms had made us some food or whatever, and I'm at the table, and I've always had this issue with like eating meat off off the bones or the chicken. And um, she's like, "Bring me your plate when you're done," and I'm like, "Oh shit." If I don't clean my plate, she's gonna whoop my ass. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm sitting at the table for an extra 10, 15 minutes trying to clean this chicken to make my mama happy. And I go in there and I'm I, I finally get it done. And I go in there, I bring her the plate, and the, the chicken is clean. And the look on her face, fam, she was like, Oh, you ate it all? And I'm smiling, like, yeah. And then she's like, Oh, I was gonna eat what's left, what was left over. And I, I remember being like, damn, like shorty didn't eat all day and sac gave a sacrifice so to make sure her kids eat and she didn't eat nothing and my damn we ain't we ain't really got it like that but I, I like i i didn't know a thing of appreciation or validation or, or just acknowledging that sacrifice at that moment it was just like damn like we it wasn't like damn my mom sacrificed it was like damn we ain't got it type of thing you know what i'm saying so lo looking back at it like those are sacrifices you've made so mom if i could have if i'd have known better i'd have validated you then and Man, show some more appreciation. Order pizza some chicken right now. Throw it extra some chicken. <laughs> yeah, JJ's game right now. Shout out to Jeremiah. My nephew had his first college game today, Brown versus Siena. I'm not sure if they won, but I know they went into overtime. Shout out to my man, JJ. Um, um, you know, another th reason why I think we, we miss opportunities to validate and or appreciate is a lot of times we be going through our own shit, man. We be going through our own shit and not necessarily bad or good, but just like the struggle, right? Let's call it what it is. And it may not necessarily be a financial struggle. It could be a, 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 an emotional struggle, a mental struggle, a physical struggle. We're dealing with something, you know what I'm saying? Which, which is what we know life to be like, whatever world we live in, that's what we're dealing with. And a lot of times we can't see beyond ourselves and not, not, not that people who don't are selfish It's just, we are just trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it, we miss opportunities as a result. Do you think, so th that's like a double-edged sword right there, because I think this is a good message for the people, like on both ends, one we be so caught up in our own world that we oftentimes miss an opportunity to validate someone else. But in addition, mm -hmm. in addition, we could also probably use a little bit of validation in those moments where we can, you know, help dig ourselves out of these, out of these, these spirals and whatnot. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a very good, good point. You, you, you know what makes me uncomfortable, but I think everybody should <clears throat> do it. It's like, um, I forgot if it was Prentice or somebody just did it the other day. But basically, I forgot what it was, but essentially patted themselves on the back publicly. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember like how it went or what it was even, but it was just like, yeah, I'm proud of myself. I did this today or, or whatever the case. You know what I'm saying? Like, I haven't done this in so long and I did this today. Like, I think that that could could be looked at as like attention seeking behavior but i don't think there's anything wrong with appreciating yourself and giving yourself grace and how you go about doing that is up to you like if you do it publicly you do it privately i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think there's so much <laughs> yo i got problems I was about to say so much drama in the LBC. Yeah, LBC. Kind of <laughs> it's only right, Gus. You know what I'm saying? It's only right. It's um, only right. But no, man, we be caught up. Like, like I was talking today at work, and uh one of my coworkers, she went to Georgia, she's a big Georgia fan. And tomorrow, um, it's not it's not bowl selection, but it's basically the power rankings for the championship mm -hmm. that comes out tomorrow. And she's like, I'm definitely going to watch that. She's like, I'm not watching this election madness and all of that stuff. But that's 
life. Like it's always something like we're, we're always on go. We're always constantly going, constantly trying to figure something out, constantly hustling, whatever the case is always something. So if you don't slow down and give yourself some flowers, you may not receive them. Yeah, that's that's very much so true. That's very much so true. I, I think often that we've 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 also had this episode in the past where we kind of just get so caught up in the grind that we don't take time to pat ourselves on the back and realize that we've taken that we're halfway to where we want to be, but because we haven't gotten there, we don't give ourselves the praise for moving this far along. You know what I'm saying? We, mm-hmm. We've had that conversation many a many a time. Um, a, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I don't want you to figure out what you're gonna say though. No, no I, it's written down. I'm good. Okay. Um, I may or may not have mentioned this before. We had a, I had a conversation with um someone that was on my team, and you know her 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 family immigrated here and everything like that, and she's not having a good year, you know, like from a production standpoint and our and our from what our company deems as good, she's not having a good year, and then she's just like like going down this rabbit hole while we were on the phone, and I'm like. Yo, she had, she's been here for about eight years, I think. And I'm like, and I know her story. So I'm like, I'm like, this is crazy. I said, imagine you told yourself eight years ago, because that's how long she had been in the company, that the worst you would do in your company, you would make X. What would you say to yourself at that point eight years ago? She was like, I would be ecstatic. She's like, I could I wouldn't believe that's true. I'm like, well, here we are. You know what I'm saying? Like what you dream for, the worst, like the worst possible scenario, you dream for that. You know what I'm saying? Like you've exceeded your expectations. So now it's like, let's not forget that. Right. Like, this is your worst case scenario. You're still doing better than 95% of the country. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm yeah. like, let's just keep things in perspective because yeah. we're quick to tell ourselves a story. Yeah, but but this and but that, but the, I, I should be here. I should be, yeah. But you are where you are and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? So like, we we don't. We, we, get, we get lost, bro. We get lost in this shit. Let me ask you another question, and 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 I want you to think about it for a minute because I'm trying to process mine. So I didn't even I write these questions down or whatever, and didn't even think about it myself. But can you think? Can you think of the most validating thing someone has said to you that really stuck with you? That's that's you know that's that you that that you hold on to. Yeah, so they- mm-hmm. I don't not nothing nothing like jumps off the page. I'm, I'm a, so keep thinking. So I remember I was in like I want to say like seventh grade, bro. And um a teacher, one of the teachers accused me of like selling drugs. It was like was like I heard you. I heard you tell or ask him if he wanted a bag or something like that. And I'm like, miss, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, it wasn't me. Like, no, I heard you. And then one of the, a male teacher, shout out to Mr. Amenta. Mr. Amenta, like, came to my defense. And he was like, kind of like, it's me, my teacher too. And kind of like checked her. And he was like, uh, he was like, yeah, I don't, I don't appreciate you talking about him. Like, are you sure it was him? And then she's like, yeah, I heard him saying he's the way he's one of the most articulate young men in my class. And at that point, I, I didn't even know what articulate meant. So I guess but, I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what you're saying, but it sounds like fighting words. <laughs> nah, but he called me articulate. And I remember like afterwards we talked about it and he explained to me what it was and whatnot. And I'm just like, I, I it was something about that that made me feel really, really good. Like on one hand, Shorty's basically calling me a thug drug dealer in middle school. And he was like, came to my, he, the fact that he came to my defense, but he called me articulate. And I just remember being like, like, wow. Like, you know, I don't know. I just felt, it made me feel good. You know, it made me feel, I don't know. Yeah. 
think of the word, but it, at the time it was really, it was powerful to me. Like I just felt like, well, somebody believed in you. Right. That's the other thing. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, and I don't, I don't like, again, man, like not, nothing jumps off the page. Cause it, there's been moments like, there's definitely been moments. I think when you, well, the other thing too, is I work in a sales organization. So every year we have award ceremonies, you know what I'm saying? And people get recognition and awards and things like that. So, but back to Shannon's point, it's like, you know how many people leave those awards like pissed off that they didn't get something, but those who get things and I've gotten things often before the award is presented, they, they speak about you. You know what I'm saying? And they they say all these great things about whatever it was, whatever the award was, or however you got to that place or whatever the case. So I've had a lot of moments like that. I've had probably one of the most validating moments is when, you know, I I had went on my run in, in school. Like that, that was real cool to see, to hear, to feel. I mean, specifically, though, like, can you remember the words like that were like, damn, that felt good? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know why I don't remember, though, because I don't, like, this is going to sound horrible to say out loud, but I don't read my own press clippings. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when somebody says whatever they say, I'm quicker to dismiss it than to hold on to it. We talk not dis that. not dismiss it in its entirety, mm -hmm. but push it down and be like, all right, well, thank you. But I got to keep going. You know what yep. I'm saying? I won't say that out loud either. I'm just saying I won't I won't give it its just due like it deserves. You know, in the moment and for the longevity, whatever the case, I won't I won't necessarily do it. But we we definitely don't. I mean, shit, we just had a moment this weekend that we're going to talk to our therapist about, um, but I'll talk to you guys about it. So it's a long story, but basically I got pissed because this weekend was my first weekend home, my first full weekend home since August, which is just crazy. But my first full weekend home since August, and I was so excited. I had a whole list of things I wanted to get done. Real, some some real domesticated shit, you know, like <laughs> one of those chores was uh, cleaning out the dishwasher. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I just had a list of stuff, but the way I am, like when I get activated on like a plan, like I'm going, you know what I'm saying? Like there's nothing that's going to stop me from getting that done to my detriment sometimes. And part of that plan or what wasn't in that plan was taking Chase to jujitsu. So Lo never likes taking a jujitsu. And and I get it, but whatever. But my in my mind, I'm like, oh, but you know, I got this plan. Like, you know, I'm hype about being home and I'm gonna bang out. And everything that I was gonna do, like part of this plan was clean up the dishwasher, cleaning all the bathrooms, um, uh raking all the leaves. I had to I have to, I have to uh, replace my lock on my shed. I was doing all these things. I bought some bolt cutters, like I was about to get busy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then she's like no, I don't feel well. I don't, I don't want to take them. And this is a very, this is a prime example right here, bro. Instead of me being like, she never tells me she doesn't feel well. And for, as a reason for her not to do something, mm -hmm. instead, I made it about me. I'm like, well, you know, I had all these plans. All you got to do is take them to jujitsu. It's 30 minutes. But I let that, I let her not agreeing to take him throw my whole day off. Where I was pissed till 10 p.m. <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu was at one. Like, but but we talked about it later. And she's like, Well, you should know if I'm telling you I'm not feeling well, that's it. Like I'm not I don't say it a lot at all. But again, I'm so used to routine. Like I'm so used to her showing up how I'm used to her showing up. Mm -hmm. And the one time that she doesn't, I get pissed. 
but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's a prime example where it's like, damn, like the one time that she gets, she, she's not going to do something. I want to throw a fit, but she never bows out because she's not feeling well. You know what I'm saying? So like, that was a prime example. What is some validation for her that that you can probably throw her away if you haven't already? You know what I'm saying? What? You mean what I just said? Yeah. Yeah. No, we talked about it. We talked about it. And, um, we're going to talk about it again when we see our therapist on, um, next week, uh, this week. You you spoke about it, but uh, did you make it like you acknowledged earlier that you didn't like, you don't, you could do more of the validating, the validating part. So yes, no, we didn't talk about, I didn't say that specifically. No, I didn't say, you know, I should appreciate you more because like, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say that. Keep that in your back pocket for the therapy session or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know, for sure. Cause again, my, my opinion, we don't, none of us do it enough. Yeah, Right. So that was, uh, that's, that's that's very very true but um that was all we we, we went down all of the uh, i feel like you didn't answer none of these questions i feel like i answered them all no i did i thought i you did probably, you probably did i just don't feel like i mean you did. i i i i, I want to give you more on what the most validating thing someone has said to me but i can't think of anything the first thing that came to mind was that articulate thing in seventh grade so i guess you but know, clearly that means something because that was what 30 years ago <laughs> right. however long ago like, yeah, so that means something um yeah, but it's not, not a even. testament of how of how I mean we get validated in, in, with sports and you know making plays and this that and a third and whatever, but like I think yeah, we could I don't mean as much as my opinion. Not as much as that that comment that you just said from Mr. Amenta. I don't know. I think because I, I think I think so, because at, at one at one point in our lives, that was our identity. You know what I'm saying? The football player. So being validated as that meant a lot. See, it did, but, but I feel like, you know, okay, this is a good example. You know what good looks like in football. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're, if you're playing defense and you lead a game with 13 tackles, that's a good game. Like everybody knows that's a good game. You know what I mean? I rush for 150 yards. That's a good game. So regardless of nobody tells me, I know that was a good game. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But in life and different scenarios, a lot of times we don't know one of two things. We don't know what good looks like or we don't recognize good enough when we see it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 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 I guess what I'm saying is sports is objective. It's objective. Like you do good. It's clear. The scoreboard will show you did good. You see what I'm saying? Like some a form of measurement will show you you did good, but life is subjective. So when you set these big goals, if you're not at that goal, objectively, you can say you're failing. But subjectively, you're like, no, but I'm so much closer than I was. Yeah, but I know us. So that one game where you had 150, but you that, that, that second play, you didn't cut back where you could have had 210. That's probably what's going to eat you. What's going to eat at you the most. You know what I'm saying? It does not take away from me having a good game. You're right. You can you can nitpick, but again, objectively, there's no debating that I had a good game. Mm-hmm. Objectively, subjectively, it was like yo, you could add two ten. Like the, literally, the game I rushed for two twenty. My coach said, like, "Man, you should have had three. Literally, <laughs> that's what he said. That's what I'm saying yeah. like, but 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 you talk about validation. All everybody saw was two hundred plus rushing yards. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that that by that standing alone by itself is enough. Cause nobody can take that from you. You see what I'm saying? But we can convince ourselves that if we didn't get to the goal, that's it's a zero sum game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though subjectively you'd be like, look, bro, you was living paycheck to paycheck. Now you got at least one paycheck that you can live off before things go to shit you know what i'm saying but but it's quick for us to to not acknowledge that that's fair that's fair well i think um we we covered but we covered a bunch of ground here this is two of us and we got 50 minutes so that's that's better than i thought we was gonna do um, i mean 
The funny thing is, this is how it started. What you mean? This is oh, how yeah, the podcast right, started. Right, right, too. right, right. right. <laughs> it's, been a long, it's been a long time since it's just been us recording. Shout yeah, out to no. Prentice. Shout I out mean, to shit, you. you and Prentice recorded by yourselves um, probably more times than you and I since he started recording by ourselves. I think you guys did one, maybe when I wasn't there, maybe two. I don't even remember. Dude, there's been so many episodes. I don't even remember. Another thing I realized, too, is we don't really take time off. We just keep recording. <laughs> shout, like, out to, shout out to us, then, you know. Yeah, a lot, one, a lot of... 127? A lot of, yeah, a lot of um, podcasts, they they do seasons, and they'll just, like, all right, we're going to take four weeks off or whatever the case, five weeks yeah, because off. Because our, our seasons be just when we, <laughs> we, we just stop. We just can't get. I don't yeah. know. We just can't yeah. get right for a minute, and then yeah, it don't be. It don't be no plan. <laughs> yeah, it don't be no plan. <laughs> like, nigga, what the fuck is going on? Where y'all at? Like, no. Nah. It's like we we calling out today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no word. I'm glad we got it in, so we can keep this train rolling. Hey, yo, we um, I'll mention that after. But go ahead, yo. Let's uh, let's tap into these final thoughts. But what what are your thoughts in regards to this whole validation and approval seeking, or or who? So I called. I, I titled the episode "Who's the Judge." I think the the biggest takeaway for me from this is let's be as quick to give approval as we as quick as we disapprove. You know what I'm saying? Like we I, I just gave you a prime example as to why I was triggered with low, but it's like when was the last time I said I appreciate you? always showing up you know what i'm saying like that's something that's simple but again we don't slow down that's all i could chalk it up to we just don't slow down i don't think that none of us who don't do it enough or i don't think any of us who doesn't who don't do it enough um don't care deeply for those people but i think we just can't get out of our own way or see past what's in front of us for us to be like all right, let me slow down and appreciate this person. But we also have to appreciate ourselves first. Like we have to appreciate ourselves and, and the work that we're doing so we can give ourselves some grace to then leave room for other people's grace. But that's my final thought. I took a, I took a lot from it. I think a couple of things are we, we have to look like strategically and specifically look for opportunities to validate our people. I don't think we, we, we do it enough. And again, it happens like, you know, hindsight is 2020. I probably could have took an opportunity there to do it or whatever. But I think if we look for these moments to validate our people, it means it can mean so much more. I mean, I think it's kind of like, you know, the random compliments, mm -hmm. but I think validation goes a lot deep you know how they like they say you know guys always compliment a girl on how she looks but when you tell her you love the way she thinks or you know how hard mm -hmm. she works or whatever it means a little bit more so i think that's where you know the validation type type of thing comes in where you're more specific about what it is that you appreciate about these people rather than than that and i think easing up on ourselves is is something we need to do and perhaps do more validating of ourselves is 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 important because a lot of us are making strides and again none of us many of us aren't where we want to be but we've made some damn good strides forward and we yeah. don't give ourselves the credit for that like i know a ton of people who are you know chasing these goals and chasing these dreams and and falling short and so on and so forth and they're beating themselves up about the step they you know the step they miss but aren't acknowledging the the, the flights they walked you know what i'm saying so that's just yeah. Bad news travels fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, then good news dies quick. I don't think I've heard that one. We making shit up here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but who, um, hey, hey, who am I to judge? <laughs> <laughs> who am I to judge? Listen, we um we have started this uh morning quotes thing where we just try to throw some nuggets out there. Some of them be, you know, <laughs> we just, we just trying to share some with the people, man. And just, so if you tapping in and, and our morning, our morning quotes have done something for you, let us know, man. Cause we just, we just trying some new stuff and want to hit y'all with some positive thoughts and try to start your day off on the right foot and give you something to think about in the morning. So we real doing quick. That. And we got to say a rest in peace. Shout out to the legend, the oh, legend, 
Quincy Jones. Word. If you have not seen his documentary, I think it's called Q, but I'm not 100% sure, on Netflix, man, do yourself a favor. It came out like probably three, four years ago. It is, however remarkable you thought that dude was, yeah. that documentary will bring it to the next level. Like, and like legend with the capital L, like the entire word capitalized. Like, man, money got a legacy, a legacy for crazy. real, for real. No, no, yeah, yeah. Like Rest songs that you, that are famous that you wouldn't even think he was around for. He wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he crazy. wrote that. It's crazy. Not worried. Rest That's in peace, Quincy like. Jones, man. Yo, uh, go ahead. I know this will be out after the voting thing, but hey, I hope you voted. I hope y'all voted and uh, played your part, man. I, I, you do what you got to do, but I hope you, you you played your part. I don't want to. I ain't trying to get too heavy into politics. All I'm gonna say is. Play your part, yo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, do what you gotta do, man. Like, <laughs> play play your part, man. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? Play your part. Um stay tuned for our morning, our morning quotes. Tap in with us at all black many therapy on all social media outlets. We can be hit at the email at all black many therapy at gmail. Or if you want to hit us up individually, chief prentice or bell at abmnt.com. Hit the website, abmnt.com. Some merch is up there. We also have a voice line for those who need to know some immediate attention to services or, or support. We, we do our best to try to help you. It's 860-410. I got it in the thing somewhere. 860-410-6160. 860-410-6160. Um, so all I got for today, man. So... Bells, always appreciate it. Appreciate him talking to you, bro. I love you. And um I love you more. Do us all a favor, man. Hug a black man today. Come on, Bell. You gotta, you gotta oh, take this. I, I <laughs> <just, I'm not laughs> <used to> and <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> do it. We out, y'all. Y'all be cool. Y'all be cool. Peace. Yeah, for sure. I'm fucking up. I'm supposed to hit it right after the thing, but here we go.